Hey everyone, good morning. Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. How's everyone doing today? It's Saturday, October 8th, 2022. We're back for another edition of the Saturday Synopsis. What is that? Well, we look at charts, we look at stock charts, we look at charts of the indexes, trying to figure out when it may be time to get in or out of a trade. I've been in this business for 30 years now, and so I'm trying to give a glimpse into my life of what I do. I run a couple newsletters, more bullishly oriented options trading newsletters. So we're always looking for times to get into the market when the market looks a little bit more bullish. So what's been happening in 2022 so far is that we've been in a bear market. The market's been going down basically since January 1st of 2022. So for all of you that are tuning in this week, some of you newcomers, uh, I make these charts geared a little bit more towards the beginners. I try to help you understand what technical analysis chart reading is all about. Uh, there's certain ways to figure out or decide when it may be time to get into some stock trades. And looking at the stock charts for me is the way that I've been doing it for 30 years. It helps me decide when to get in or get out of trades. And for most of 2022 now, we've really been sort of sitting on the sidelines quite a bit. In our two newsletters that we run, like I said, they're more bullishly oriented options trading newsletters. We've been pretty pretty quiet this year. We've taken the least amount of trades that, that we've taken since starting up these newsletters. And um, the reason for that, because the market's telling us not to get in right now. If you're if you're in the stock market or if you're in in the game of trading and you want to take bullish positions, just look at a stock chart. And if the market's telling you that it's going down or it wants to go down, then why stick your neck out there and put your hard money on the line? It's very frustrating. You'll be frustrated. You'll get angry and upset. And and it's better to just sit on the sidelines. Cash is a position. So um, let the market tell you where it's going. Watch the price action. The price action is just where the market is moving. Is it moving up or is it moving down? And for us, um, the market hasn't been that great as far as taking bullish positions. So we've been sitting out quite a bit and I'm okay with that. I'd rather sit out than, than, than be frustrated and, and, and have a higher probability of losing money. So for those of you who are new, I'm here to show you what I'm seeing on the charts and, and why I'm sitting more on the sidelines and when it may be time to get back in. So all we have to do is look at this charts, look at the price action, and we use some technical uh, indicators and support and resistance levels and some of these patterns here that help us decide when to get in and when to get out. So what we do with the Saturday synopsis, we look at the charts and we try to figure out out, is this trade worthy right now or should we just keep sitting on the sidelines so let's just jump right in you know what you see in front of you is a stock chart this is what we do uh, I use eSignal as my chart charting platform and what you see up here is just the price action of the SPY which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500 which is my gauge of the best overall view of the market and um, all these little lines here you see uh, is one day's worth of trading. Each line is one day's worth of trading. This is a daily chart. You can look at weekly charts, monthly charts, daily charts, one minute charts if you're a hyperactive trader. And all you want to do is try to figure out which way the market's been going or which way the stock is headed. And you can draw certain patterns. And these are channels, these, these little channels you see here, channel here, channel down. And it helps you decide or figure out which way the market's trending because it all, it's all about which way a market or a stock is trending and you want to jump on that trend. And so up here is the price action along with three different moving averages. I have a, a blue 20-day moving average, which is this line right here. I have a 50-day moving average, which is this line right here, and a 200-day moving average right here. And they're all simple moving averages, not exponential, but simple. You can tweak your indicators any way you like. Down here is the 14-day RSI. It's an overbought, oversold indicator hopping between the 80 level and the 20 level. And those are the, and that's it. That's all the indicators that I use. And it's really more about just looking to see where the price action is moving. There's hundreds of technical indicators that you can try. Um, and, and, I, and I tell you, you should try. See which ones work for you. And it takes time. You know, you can't use them all because then you won't be able to see anything on your screen. But this is what I've come up with. So let's jump right in. Let's take a look at, at the SPY and then we'll look at some individual stocks. Now, right back here is January 2022. And you can just see the downtrend. The price action is an overall downtrend. Yeah, we have ups and downs, but overall it's moving down. 
Now, since COVID of 2020, which was the bottom was right here in March of 2020, the market just had been going up, 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 up nicely. Nice channel. You can see the upwards movement. And then as we got in towards the end of 2021, we started to get a little choppy here. And this is where we are now, 2022, just been in this downtrend. We had this, we had this two month reprieve here from middle of June to middle of August. And then the middle of August, it's just been down. So you see this inverted V right here. Okay. This is the channel. This is the pattern that we've, we've been dealing with since the middle of June. Now, so what happened? Um, hit a bottom in the middle of June, rallied up. You can see the channel here. So we put the price action inside of a channel. These are lines that I actually draw. Okay, these, are, these just don't appear on the chart. These are lines that I draw. And it helps us decide, you know, if we want to, you know, sell up here or buy up here, you wait for it as it bounces along the channel. If you're a shorter term trader, you can take these kinds of trades. You can sell while it's up here, buy a little here and sell up here and buy some here. So if you're that type of trader, you can, you can play the bounces within the channels. But what happened? Why did, why did all of a sudden it sell off up here and take us all the way back down to where we were back in the middle of June? Well, on a technical basis, the market was moving up nicely, but it came in contact with the down sloping 200 day moving average right here. And it came upon at the same time hitting the top edge of the upper leg of the channel here. And so all that came to fruition and the market just decided to sell it off. And it's also because we still have these headlines. The U.S. Federal Reserve is raising interest rates pretty aggressively. Uh, they've said they're not really going to stop raising rates until inflation starts to come back down. We know inflation around the world is running really high. Everything's really expensive. And the way that the, the Federal Reserve um, tries to alleviate inflation is to raise interest rates. And that all kind of came to a head in the middle of August where, the, where we realized the Fed is not backing down. They're going to keep raising interest rates. So that kind of hit, stalled the market right up here. And we've just been going down since. Now, where we were last Friday was right here. So last Friday, um, here was the support. This was the, the low in June, around 362 on the SPY. And the market had come all the way up. Middle, middle of August came all the way back down. So here we were last Friday. This, this bar blasted through, broke the lows from June. And last uh, Friday, uh, we, we were here. And, and when I made the video last Saturday, I said, well, you know, there's a lot of things coming, possibly coming to an end for the bear market. Um, end of September, you know, September is the worst month of the year for the stock market. Turning the calendar over to October, psychologically for a lot of people it, it is, is a good thing. And, um, you know, the VIX was getting really high. We'll take a look at the VIX. The fear and greed indicator was getting really low. People were very, very fearful. So a lot of those things coming together was just ripe for a bounce in the market. And when we opened up on Monday, just this week, here we are, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we came up nicely, had this nice rally this week right here, and it came upon the downtrending 20-day moving average right here. Here's the 20-day moving average. And uh, Friday, yesterday, October 7th, we had the unemployment numbers here in the U.S., and the market just didn't, wasn't nice uh, for that, for those numbers that came out. And we had this massive one day move right here. This was a big move. This was Friday, yesterday, October 7th. And so all the gains that we had made during the week was all given back in the second half of Thursday and yesterday, Friday, October 7th. And where did we finish? Well, you can see here, here's our line in the sand, basically around $362 in the SPY. We popped through it during the day. You can see the movement down here, but we closed above it. We closed there's a little dash mark. Let me try to do this zoom here one time and try to figure out, uh, I want to show you. Um, uh, let's see if I can figure this out here. Okay. So, and I'll use my little pencil here. So you can see right here, there's a little dash mark. I'm going to circle it right here. The little dash mark on the right side of that, this long bar here is uh, yesterday's trading, okay? So as you can see that, we closed above the support, which could be a good thing. So maybe on Monday coming up, maybe we'll continue uh, back up higher. 
We've hit the support again. It bounced off of the support. So I'm hoping next week will once again bounce up higher. If it blasts through, if it blasts through to the downside, uh, like I've been saying, you have to look back to the prior past and see where the next area of support could be. So where would that be? Well, we go back on the you know the SPY chart. So here, this area, this little W pattern was the last real support here in October of 2020 before the market really went on the tear higher. So you can see here somewhere between 320 and maybe you know 320 to 350. You look back, scale back. Here's 320. Scale across. You have this area right here. So somewhere in this area, 320 to 350 is really the next line of support uh, if the market really breaks down this week. I really don't want to see that. I'm bullish. I'm long. I have positions for my retirement for the long term. I know in the long run the market's going to go up. It's just you know having the patience to sit through it all. Here's the long term chart of the market. Uh, this is the monthly chart. So each line is one month's worth of trading going back to the early 1990s. And the market just goes up over time because that's how the stock market works. The stock market is made up of actual companies. They make actual products. People actually buy these products with real money. And so if companies are profitable in the long run, their stock chart's going to go up. So you have to, you have to find stocks that you're comfortable with, companies that you're comfortable with, knowing that they're good companies, they make good products. The S&P 500 holds a lot of these quality companies. So that's why, um, you know, for me, a lot of my uh, retirement money is just, you know, buying the, the, the S&P 500. You know, you get a smattering of all those stocks. And so you have to sit through these times where the market comes off. And, and, and it's really hard to, you know, st stick your stick your toes in the water and start buying when everyone else is selling. But, but if you, if you look at the market in the long run, you'll see, you know, buying when everyone else is really scared are usually the best times to buy, even though it's very scary to do. So what, what have I been doing personally? I nibble on the way down. That's what I do. I don't put it all in at one time. I nibble on the way down so I can get things cheaper and cheaper, uh, over time and then just have to wait it out. But in our newsletters that we run, um, we take bullish option trades. We sell put options. We sell put option credit threads. Those are more bullish positions. And if the market's telling us that it wants to go down, then we're staying out. We're light. Our positions, like I said, uh, are a lot less. The actual number of positions are a lot less this year because the market's not being nice to us. So we stay out. We keep our money out. And if you'd like to know what we do, um, you know, put option selling is our main gig. You go to our website, smartoptionseller.com and smartoptionseller.com right up here and go to the put selling basics header and this is where we have our free ebook the ebook that i wrote about what put what selling put options is all about why it's such a great strategy why i've been doing it for so long and 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 you'll come to this little uh, box here put your name and email address in here we'll send you an email with a link to to get the the free report and, um, you know, that's really the basis of everything we do. And for our newsletters right here, services tab, we have our two newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. And also here is our shop. We have a, a report that I wrote about Warren Buffett, about piggybacking Warren Buffett with a different options trading strategy. So you could take a look at that too as well. So get our free ebook and, and learn about put option selling. So for now, where are we? What's going to happen next week? Well, like I said, right here on the sport line, 362 closed just above it. Um, I'm hopeful that maybe we'll get the rally next week, but if it blasts through, keep an eye on that 320 to 340 level. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're coming into the bullish last quarter of the year, typically. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping we'll see a rally into the end of the year and then moving on, you know, back up to the highs around 480 on the uh, SPY. Here's the all time high, just around 480. So we've been in this nasty kind of down move. I mean, the headlines out there all year in 2022, COVID and the supply chain woes and, um, you know, the war in Ukraine, all these, the, all these bad headline news items. Inflation has been high. Interest rates are going up. You know, all these things are, are 
temporarily bad for the stock market. That's just, you know, we have to endure these things. But over time, these headline stories will resolve themselves, they'll go away, and then the market will, will turn around and go back up again. We're just so used to the market going up all the time, and when the market does pull back, we're so used to go, it going up very quickly. We've been in this bear market since January 1st. And it's hard to sit through this and it's hard to to see your portfolio balance keep dwindling day after day if you're looking at your portfolio balance it's 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 hard it's hard psychologically you think that you know why am i doing this why am i putting my money in the stock market when it just keeps going down because we know in the long run going back to the monthly chart in the long run the market will go up over time it's just what it does so you gotta have you have to have patience but for your shorter term traders you know, using technical analysis is 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 really helpful to gauge, you know, when I should get in and when I should get out. And right now we're in this downtrending channel. You can see the blue lines here in the channel. Um, when the market rallied, it came upon right on the 20 day downsloping moving average right here. That's where it ended. That's where the selling began. You know, these moving averages are not just some lines on a chart. They're, they're, they're basically magnets. A lot of the price action fluctuates around these moving average, averages. And right here, it's no coincidence that the market started to sell off right at the 20 day moving average. That's how these things work. So you got to keep these things on your chart to help you gauge, you know, when, when the selling might come back in or when the buying might start as well. All right. So let's look at the Q's, the triple Q's. This follows the NASDAQ. Okay. So let's take a look here. I uh, had drawn a couple lines, a couple support lines. Once again, you can see the yesterday, Friday, October 7th, look where we stopped right on the support area, which was the June low. So for, for the, the NASDAQ, the triple Q's, you know, it's that 270 ish level right around here, this bottom line here. And you know, wh why did the market stop right there? Because the, the market looks at past technical indicators, past technical levels to help guide where it may be, you know, where it should be trading in the future. It's not a coincidence that these few days right here stopped right about where this June low was. If you, if you, if you've been watching charts for a long time, like I have, these things happen over and over again. Okay. Cause the market has to look at past prices to help gauge, you know, where it should stop selling when it's coming down or where it should stop going up when it's going up. All right. Th that's just how it works. And the longer you watch charts, these patterns will repeat over and over again. And you know, this for, for a period of time, this was a support area and it blasted through that. I'm going to take this line off here. We're going to use these lines. I'm going to take this one off too. So for now, we're going to use this line and see what happens next week. And if it blasts down below it, if it blasts below around 270, where is the next line of support? Well, like I said, we got to go back. Um, you know, this is, I mean, since the COVID low, which has been going up. So there really is, I'd say maybe 260, maybe around here 260 or so so about another 10 point lower 260 is the next line in the sand right around here so we can we can put a we can put a line there too let me grab a line here we can put a line right around 260 and we'll see next week when we come back and i'm making these videos um whether this was a good a good area support area all right so that's the nasdaq let's look at the dow jones this is the DIA, the diamonds, DIA. <clears throat> the, the, the Dow Industrial is actually quite weak. Looks weaker than the, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Here was the June low right here, and it, it fell through it pretty good last week. Popped up this week just like everything else, but then once again popped down below it. So the Dow Jones, pretty weak, falling below the support. Where's the next line of support? Where are we round? Right around 295 or so, 297. Um, here, probably this little this little area here almost looks like that W that we see on the the S and P chart. So right around here, probably low 260s. Right around here, let's draw another line. Let's put it in right around. Let's put the line in right around here and see if the you know if the market comes off. This will be the area where it looks to. If I can get this line straight, let's try that. All right. So 
The Dow looking pretty weak. I, I really don't want to see it fall this far. That would not be good. I'd like to see it bounce uh, next week if we can. All right, let's look at some individual stocks. We typically look at the more popular stocks because that's what people like to trade and that's what people are interested in. Uh, Apple is got had had a rough week as well. Uh, last week it was had you know come off. There was some news news item out there about um, Apple and their suppliers not making enough iPhones or Apple telling their suppliers to cut back on making iPhones or something of that sort. So Apple has been weak. It had fallen pretty good, bounced a little and fell as well. You know, we can probably redraw this downtrending channel. Let's, let's remove these lines and, and sort of draw a new one. I could show you how to, you know, it's not an exact science. What you do is you connect some of the tops. Okay. You extend the line, you connect some of the tops of each, you know, of these bars, and then you connect some of the bottoms. Okay. So now we have a nice, more clean looking channel here. So now we're at the bottom edge of the channel <clears throat> coming off again. So maybe it'll, it'll either keep coming down or it might bounce. So you use the channel as your guide for the bounces and the, re you know, rejections off the, the top edge. And whichever way the general market's going to go, Apple will also follow too, unless there's some news on Apple and Apple will be the leader and the market will, will follow along. But for now we're in that inverted V channel, just like everything else. Um, okay. So let's look at Tesla. It's all about using the patterns, the price action, trying to gauge, you know, where things want to go. Um, Tesla finally broke from that 300 level. It's been, it's been a rough two weeks for Tesla coming back to lows. It finished at 223. Here is the June lows, June and July lows right around, I don't know, maybe 215 or so. Tesla's coming back down, wants to probably plumb these lows here. So let's put a line, let's put a, a support line right around here and see uh, if Tesla wants to possibly engage with that area. Um, you know, Tesla's a hard one to trade. The, the chart is very ugly, a lot of ups and downs, not really a clear direction, had these, these uh, congestion patterns, these triangle patterns right here where the, the trading range gets really tight and then it explodes in one way or the other. Um, so Tesla was trying to hold above 300 and just, you know, what the rest of the market has fallen. So everything's, everything's on the defensive. I mean, there's no question about it. Everything's on the defensive and um, it depends how you want to play it. I mean, if you're an intraday trader, you can go into the one minute charts. These are one minute charts. Every line is one minute's worth of trading. So if you're a hyperactive trader, you can try your hand at trying to sell here, trying to buy here, trying to sell here, trying to buy here. But for a lot of people, what they end up doing is they end up buying here and they end up selling here and they end up buying here again and they end up selling here and they can't do it. It's hard. It's really hard to gauge some, any kind of system to figure out, do I want to buy or sell here? Do I want to buy or sell here? So if you're trading hyperactive like that, um, you know, I wish you luck. I, I've never really been able to do it. It's just too random on that short of a time frame, The market's just too random. I like to take a longer term time frame, and I'm talking months, you know, weeks, months, years in the long run, the market will go up. But for our newsletter, you know, we're a couple months, our, our hold period is a couple months out. So we really have to be pretty precise with our timing. And we use all these patterns and the support and resistance levels to try to help us give, to give us the highest probability of be, being profitable on our trades. So we really have to know what the charts look like and where the support and resistance lies. Okay, so that's Tesla. Uh, Microsoft had a pretty, pretty big down day yesterday down twelve and a half dollars you can see this bar right here big bar and you know it's been locked in this downtrending channel as well got above it but there we were hit that resistance right at the 200 day moving average right in the middle of august just like everything else and it's just been coming down since so you know let's extend this line let's draw a new one you draw the channel you connect you connect some of the bottoms extend the extend the leg and um you know that gives you the the bottom edge of the channel there so 
if Microsoft keeps coming down, it, it's going to connect with the, the bottom edge of the channel somewhere down here. So everything's still in a downtrend, unfortunately. Um, Intel is another big player, the chip player. We're going to look at the chip stocks because they've been getting hammered. Even AMD, which I love as well as a company, hammered. Just look at this, just down, 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 down. AMD, just another, a new low here. 58 and a half right here. Just blowing through all line, blew through all areas of support. I'm going to take, I'm going to take these lines off now because now these lines have been violated and AMD still in this channel. Now still in the channel, we can draw the new line. Oops. Let's get rid of this one is what I want to do. Remove. And we want to draw a new line and just try to figure out, you know, where the, where the bottom could be. Okay, so if AMD keeps falling, it's going to meet up somewhere down here. Next year of support could be the 40 level. Got to move back in time. You know, AMD had been holding above this 70-something level in the low 70s for a long period of time. Since July of 2020, this low 70s, you can see all along here, was a good support area for AMD. And then just not that long ago, just last week or so, it blew through the 70 level and is now 58 and a half roughly. So where's the next line of support? Right around here, this this whole bunch of movement right here, which is in the, you know, 45, 45 to high 50 range. And we're, we're about there right now. So the next area of support right in here, like I said, mid 40s to, to high 50s, this whole area right here. So the bottom edge lines up with that next area of support back here. Um, things are getting cheap. Stocks are getting cheap based on where they were at the beginning of 2022. So you have to decide if you want to get in, you know, wh where do I want to get in? Do I just want to sit here and wait until the bottom shows up? Sometimes we never know when the bottom shows up. Sometimes it's too late. You've missed the bottom. So like I said, what I do is I nibble on, a, on companies where I'm, I'm pretty strong about their long-term survival. I nibble on the way down. And for now, AMD still telling me, no, you know, I, I'm stopped nibbling on AMD because it's just, it's just going down. It's, it's still when, when it, when it meets up with this line potentially and it bounces, you know, maybe I'll start to nibble a little bit more, but a lot of these stocks just look too weak that, that I'm just staying out for now. Um, Nvidia, another chip stock violated this last s support line too, has fallen below it. So all the chip stocks are getting hurt. Micron, I mean, along with everything else, everything's been going down. Um, what other stocks? Amazon, you know, we look at the biggies. Amazon, here is that that support right here, just above 100. So we still have, um, it's in this downtrend, just like everything else. You can see the channel. Everything's weak. Everything's weak. But uh, Amazon's got the support. If it, if it chooses to hold low 100s, if it keeps coming down, um, let me look at my watch list here. Um, t -t -t Nike had that big gap lower last week because of their earnings. See the gap almost fully closed the gap. Here is where it closed one day and then it opened down here, which leaves what's called a gap. And a lot of stocks like to try to fill the gap with later movement. What I mean by that, as the stock moves up, it tries to close the hole here between the bottom edge of this can, this bar, and then the, the, the price movement tries to close that whole hole. <laughs> um, hasn't done it yet. There's just a little bit of gap still left, but then it got knocked back down. Nike, I mean, this is a quality, quality company. We can, we can look at the, the long-term chart of Nike. Let's see if there's any support areas we can look at. Um, it's coming down off this all time highs. Here's the COVID low here, right around $60. So I, I don't want to see Nike come that far, but what that would be the next line of support right at $60. After that, this area right around, you know, mid right around $50. Here's that support line right here. And here's the 200 day, 200 month moving average right here. Um, so these are quality companies. 
Nike is a quality company. Uh, we look at Disney. I'm talking about quality companies here. Disney, same thing. Down, 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 down. Uh, that's the what's the Disney long term support area. Here's the COVID low right here, right around eighty dollars a share. This this bar right here, eighty dollars. Here's the upsloping two hundred month moving average, also right around eighty dollars. So if I had to say the ultimate support area for Disney, if it keeps coming down, could be right around eighty dollars a share. We got the upsloping 200, 200 month moving average. We got the COVID low and we got some support right here. So let's put a line in. We'll keep an eye on this just in case Disney possibly falls. Um, we'll put it right around $80 and we'll see what happens. You know, if you're a put seller and you like selling puts and if you think $80 is a, is a great area to potentially own Disney, selling puts is a viable strategy. Selling an $80 put options. This is not a recommendation. Please don't take this as a recommendation, but if you're selling puts and you're okay with buying Disney at $80 a share, potentially, you can sell put options at the $80 level. Choose an expiration date that might work for you. Uh, Disney's at $97. If you have to buy it at 80, that's a $17 discount from where it is now. And it's also like a $100 discount from where it had been, $180 a share, not that long ago. So that's why we like to sell put options. We pick companies that we know that have long-term success and we sell put options at levels where we would be comfortable owning that stock. We look at Cisco. We have a position in Cisco, put sell position that we had to roll. We rolled it down to get us into potentially buying Cisco at even better levels. Cisco, $40 seems to be the, the support at the moment. Uh, but like everything else, it's sitting on that support. It may break through it. Oracle. Another company that we like. We're sitting on the sidelines for now for Oracle. Looks like I had this, this line right here, this support line right around $60. You can see it almost bounced right at $60. Um, this was, a, this was a, a line that I had drawn long ago. So we look for these prior support levels to see. Um, what else? Procter & Gamble, great company, but plumbing lows. Plumbing the lows. $124 had been up to been up $165. These are great companies. We're looking at Coca-Cola. Um, we put out an, you know, an unofficial trade on Coca-Cola. Um, it's still working. It's still above the strike price, but, but a company like Coca-Cola, look at, look at this, just, you know, a waterfall movement lower. You don't really see that with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a, is a company that just, is a slow grinder, just a slow grinder up. But this movement has been pretty hard and fast. That's unusual for Coca-Cola. Getting into the oversold levels on the RSI, nibbling, nibbling on Coke as it's coming down, nibbling on shares. Pepsi, same thing. Another stalwart, great dividend paying company. Uh, still, you can see the overall uptrend bottom left to top right the stock has been moving up has the pullbacks but overall it's been moving up as in a current downtrend but it's a, another great company another great company healthcare stocks Eli Lilly Bristol Myers Pfizer Merck uh, J&J is on here somewhere Try the XLV if you want to get a smattering of healthcare and pharmaceutical companies. The XLV, right here, XLV is your, your thing. Um, PayPal, kind of hugging along, 90 level. Um, where's Netflix? Because I want to talk about Netflix. Let me type it in here. Netflix as just in this very, very, very tight channel here. Waiting the blow one way or the other. Um, big down day yesterday, over $15 to the downside, but here's the, here's the support line right here. Still, it's still holding, but it has huge gaps, has gaps, got a long way to go, um, to make up for all the movement down. It was a $700 share stock at one point, got to about 150 trading around 225 now. So Netflix got a long way to go, but maybe finding some support, um, for the last couple of weeks. What else? What else? What else? Costco um, moves up and down pretty good, down $14 yesterday. Um, we look at Warren Buffett. 
Here's the Berkshire class B shares, not the A shares, the B shares. It has the support right around, you know, two, six, in the low 260s, still holding. Go to our website, uh, look under the shop, the shop tab. There's a report that I wrote on how to piggyback Warren Buffett for pennies on the dollar, different type of options trading strategy, if that may interest you. So Warren Buffett, you know, no one's immune, even the Oracle of Omaha, uh, been moving down inverted v here but here's the support line could bounce if we get down in those low 260s what else twitter had some interesting news this week elon musk I, looks like he may be giving in and and deciding to get back in and and buy the company for the original amount of 54 dollars a share i think it was so had the big move earlier in the week you can see the big big bar right here so we'll see if it comes to fruition what else? Uh, Facebook, Meta, still plumbing new lows. And um, that's really about it. Oh, here's, let's look at the, the two utility companies that I've been focusing on. Consolidated Edison. Here's the symbol, ED, Ed. Um, you know, been a mover to the upside, bottom left to top right. But this week, the last couple of weeks, just this waterfall down move, which is pretty rare for utility companies. Plumbing the, the lows here on the RSI, big movements down. You know, if you're a utility guy, um, you know, utilities usually pay pretty well dividend-wise. And Southern Company, SO, Southern, another utility company, just, just, like Con, just like Con Ed, just this watershed, waterfall movement down. And so where we were back here low sixty dollars it took all this time to get all the way up there and just in a matter of you know two weeks or so three weeks it's given it all back getting into some oversold levels on the r side so those are two companies that i've been kind of keeping a keeping an eye on all right so that pretty much sums it up everything is on the defensive is the most part okay let's spy one more time we're on the defensive uh, 362. Keep an eye on the 362 level for the SPY for next week. See if it wants to plumb again through it, or maybe we'll bounce again and see what happens. Uh, you know, I'm hopeful for the for the bull market. Last quarter of the year is usually pretty bullish, so let's see what happens. I mean, this news is getting old, long in the tooth. All these new news items, but it's still holding the market back. We'll see how much longer it lasts. Okay. All right, that's it for this um, edition of the Saturday Synopsis. I hope it's been helpful. Give me a thumbs up in this YouTube um, video here. Uh, subscribe if you have not subscribed. If you want to subscribe, leave me a comment. Send me an email. I always answer, and uh, I do these videos typically every Saturday. I, I probably won't be around uh, the next two weekends. Got some obligations, so I'll be back in a couple weeks from now. I uh, hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. Uh, this is Lee Lowell signing off.